<laughs> this is Christy Cass and Sam <laughs> Summit. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy Cass, and this is Sam Kemet. We're reporting to you live from the windiest city in Minnesota, Rochester. Hey, Echo Online fam, welcome to Echo welcome. Sunday Service. We are so thankful to have yeah. this platform to connect with each one of you. Let's celebrate each other today by commenting a hello, taking a buddy, and of course, tapping that heart. Tap the heart. If you are new to Echo's online service, here is what to expect. We're gonna start with our very own Echo Band, hear a message from Pastor Andy, and have a time of response, all under 50 minutes. Superheroes, never fear. Do not we fear. will have Superhero Sunday next Sunday, November 8th. For today, we would love to see some amazing costumes online. Yeah. Post your best or your worst pictures and tag Echo. There is a prize to be won if that helps. But you must <laughs> post and tag us to win. Yes, do it. Prayer, will you partner with us in prayer for our country, for our leadership, and for God's will to be done? Your prayers matter, they make a difference. So let's join together and pray for our nation. Today, we start a new series titled Divided Nation. Pastor Andy will talk about Nehemiah and his first steps to unite a nation once again. Now, we know many of you are new to Echo, and many of you are just new to church in general. And we want to take a minute to explain the importance of generosity. We often celebrate the what we're able to do through your generosity, but we don't talk a whole lot about the why. In 2 Corinthians 6, it says, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will have a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Mm -hmm. You must each decide in your own heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in a response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully and God will generously provide all that you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others as the scripture says. They share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. Echo, let's be the church that gives generously and at the same time sees needs and shares freely. Mm -hmm. If you are looking to give today, you can do so in three different ways. You can head to our website, you can text any amount to 84321, or you can use our Church Center app. Yeah, thank you for joining us online. We hope you enjoy Echo Sunday service. Small mic out.
kick down like you won't tear down No matter the situation this morning, he's greater There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up We invite him into that space There's no wall you won't kick down like you won't tear down same attitude of worship God God we bring this praise and this worship as an offering to your glory God we invite you into the deepest parts of our soul and our hearts God God and we just ask for you to come in and intervene God that you would break away the shackles and the chains that hold us back God God that we'd be impacted by the reckless love of your spirit Jesus the love that goes after us. God, when we're far away. God, the love that brings grace to every scenario of our life. God, you are worthy and you are good, no matter the circumstance, Father. God, you are worthy and you are good, no matter the circumstance. God, we give you honor and praise in this place, and everyone says amen. Think about that. Everybody love everybody! Come on! When I was in high school, I accelerated in one subject. It was math. And it's because I understood some of these basic principles within math. One being this. I know this is gonna sound really, really brilliant. Uh, but when it comes to multiplying positive numbers, you always get more. But when you divide, you always get less. And today we're starting a brand new series called Divided Nations. And honestly, I don't know how you feel, but I feel 
Like, man, we are more divided than we've ever been before. We are in the midst of an election week. I wanna take a few moments and talk about our state of division. I mean, it's super evident. I understand how media works. I understand how the political process goes. Uh, what we end up doing is focusing on our differences in order to know how we can vote or how we should vote or how we can't vote. But we, regardless of where we're at, this is not a great state to be in. This is not a great moment to live as the tensions are just so evident. And, but this was nothing new. This is something that happened in scripture uh, back to back to back times. And one of those moments uh, happened in the book of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah uh, is a leader of his day and he's exiled. He actually has been divided. He's been scattered to a different nation and he has a heart for what Israel is supposed to be. And so he starts inquiring what is going on and looking into it. And he finds out that the remnant, the people remaining in the nation are not doing good. The current condition of this nation is divided. Literally, they are scattered, they're exiled, and there are not many things to look forward to. And Nehemiah is looking into it. He starts asking the people, how is my state doing? So he asked them, he, he said, how is it going? And they replied, those who survived the exile are back in the providence and in, and in great trouble and disgrace. The walls of Jerusalem are broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. I mean, their current condition is at all time low, economically struggling. I want to talk a little bit about this word remnant. I want to clarify, sometimes when we hear the word remnant, we think of the word waste. You know, the things that were remaining. And I just want to say this, when there is little, left, God wants to do more. In the kingdom of God, when God sees remnant, he wants to do more with it than we could ever hope or dream. And I'm telling you, some of us, we feel like we've got little to offer. We don't have much uh, left, but I'm telling you, this is the very moment where God wants to do something great. God wants to use your little, and he wants to to do something great within you, in the context of your home, in the context of those that know you or your workspace, God wants to do something great. This last summer, I decided to overexert myself and build a he shed. <laughs> My girls call it a, uh, a she shed. A little argument there, but uh, I call it the holy shed. But regardless of what we call it, what I started to do is I start building a sauna in the very back of that shed. And, and I was, so that was what I was anticipating. And, and actually my vision was to build a shed so I could put a sauna in it. And I came to the point of completion, but yet didn't have stone to put on top of this wood burning stove. And, and I tried it out and it was good and it would heat up the place, but it just wasn't complete. And so I start looking for some lava rock and you just can't find that right now in the midst of COVID and the pandemic and distribution. And so I lean into my friends at Home Collective, Cordy and, and John, I said, hey, you guys got anything left over that you'd be able to maybe give me or sell at a, you know, a really cheap price because I'm cheap. Uh, and they said, yeah, we've got some out there, um, you know, some pieces that we don't, we can't use. And if you want to take uh, what you want to take, then go right ahead and use it. And so I grabbed a few of these very small slabs of, of granite and I brought it down to this he shed and I tried to place those pieces on top of the stove, but I realized that this remnant still wasn't broken down to where it needed to be. See, I believe that in the kingdom of God, we may feel like we have so little 
to offer, but I'm telling you, God wants to do more. And I'm telling you what, I believe even though this is a stretching time, mentally, emotionally, in the midst of an election week, I'm telling you what, man, God wants to use your little to do more, that God wants to, in essence, use what you have to remain. And you know what? He might even have to break it down a little bit more to be able to use, be used for the purpose that he wants to use it. And when Nehemiah heard this, it, it says this, he sat down and he wept because of the condition of his world, his context, his state, his country. And for some days, it says, I mourned and I fasted and I prayed before the God of heaven. And then after he processed this, after he prayed, after he mourned, after he fasted, he said this, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ears be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. And then he says this, I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed your commandments, decrees, and laws, your instructions that you gave your servant Moses. And then verse 8, he says, Remember the instructions you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commandments, then even, this is good, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, Picture that. I will gather them. Even if they are at the furthest horizon, off in the distance, God promised to gather them. See, I believe God desires to gather us at this very moment of division. That God desires to bring us together. God's heart is to unite us. See, I believe the answer of a divided nation is this. Obedience to God that starts with a pursuit of prayer. I know it feels like kind of crazy right now because we're in the midst of an election, but I'm telling you what, this nation is divided and it doesn't just need you to vote, it needs you to pray. We need to ask God to begin to do something in and through us and around us in this very moment. There's three things that Nehemiah does before God, and I just want to present this idea to you. Is number one, he confesses who God is. And we can do that, and we should do that. He says, Almighty God. He declares the greatness of who God is and what God can do. And the second thing he does as he's interacting and, and seeking God to do something great in his nation through him, and through it, the nation to rebuild the walls as he began to confess his own sins. And I'll tell you what, this world, this week would be much better if we'd stop confessing everybody else's sins and we would begin to confess our own. Let's just sit on that thought just for a second. What if we would begin to confess our own sins versus focusing on everybody else's sins? Really, honestly, I believe God desires for our nation to be under one God, and that's Jesus as King. As like as what we like to say around Echo is this, is Jesus is at the center. And at the very center of our faith, Jesus is praying for us. And in John 17, it says this, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That's talking about us, the people who told us about Jesus, generation after generation after generation. But verse 21 of chapter 17 of John says this, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. That's a picture of God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus united as one, a picture of unity. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. 
In verse 20, 22, it says, I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. This is a prayer of unity. In verse 23, it says this, I in them and you in me so that they may be brought into complete unity. Then the world will, will know that you sent me and have loved them even as I and as you have loved me. Man, I'm trying to tell you this. Obedience to this prayer will equate to our pursuit of unity amongst each other. And the third thing he did is he remembered and reminded God what he had promised. And I'm telling you what, this is the moment. This is the time where we as believers, followers of Jesus, let us lean in and ask God to do what he said he would do. And I believe God is in the business of unifying, that God is in the business of building up and rebuilding and restoring. And I'm telling you what, he wants to use you in the process. I mean, right now in this very moment, in this election week, I'm telling you, we have a bunch of reasons to divide. We understand our differences. We understand that we're all not voting the same. We understand that our moral compasses are all kind of different in their different reason. And and we're voting for a different uh, purpose. But I wanna tell you this, I think it's very important for us to hear. Let's not confuse unity with conformity. God is not asking us to be, <laughs> become a bunch of Twinkies and all look the same. I'm telling you that the new unity will be found in diversity. And I'm telling you, come on, Echo Church, let's lead the way. Let's be a diverse group of individuals, not looking for our differences, but leaning into each other because of our similarities not necessarily conforming to one another, but uniting in the midst of our differences and celebrating that, guess what? Jesus is at the center and at the center, he is praying for us to unite in this very moment of difference. At the end of the chapter in Nehemiah verse 11, Nehemiah says, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. And then it says this, give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. And then Nehemiah says this, I was a cupbearer to the king. And honestly, where I think we're at today and what we could walk away with within this message into into this context, into the narrative that I'm presenting today is, is you know what? You're somewhere and you're doing something. And I'm wondering if we would say that same prayer for us. God, give your servants success where we are and what we do to bring unity instead of division. Because I'm telling you, this is the truth. When it comes to positive multiplication, you always get more. But when you divide, you always get less. Some of you are watching this message today and you're hearing a lot about Jesus as King, but you've yet to make Jesus your Lord. You've yet to surrender your way to God. And today I want to invite you to join us in a prayer that we pray every week that just simply acknowledges that we don't have it all figured out. And because we don't, and because we fail, and because we have a propensity to divide instead of unite, that we need Jesus more than ever before. And so what we simply do every week is just surrender. And so if you wouldn't mind, would you pray this prayer with us today as you surrender your life to God, maybe for the first time, for the first time in a long while. Pray with me today. Jesus, I surrender. I have more questions than answers, but I choose to follow you anyway. I acknowledge that you lived, you died, you rose again, all with us in mind. 
I accept the rescue that you offer. Save me and lead me in Jesus' name and his authority. Amen. And church, I believe this is the very moment where we need to lean in and ask the Lord to unite us as a church, but also unite us as a city, as a southeast section of Minnesota, of a state that is divided, a nation that is divided. And today, may we move into this week and begin to pray for our leaders, pray for those that are being elected or not elected, asking, Lord, would you have your way in this nation? Because guess what? Our way will always divide, but God's way will always multiply. He'll always bring more. It may not necessarily look more at the moment, but God is up to something. He's up to using your little to bring more. And Jesus, today, I just pray, God, that you would do that in this nation. That God, right now, when we feel like things are just like being taken away from us, that our rights are being uh, rejected, or we have less in our bank account, or we, we have more anxiety and less peace, God, I just ask that Jesus, that you would begin to unite us as the body of Christ, that we'd no longer and uh, be angry at all of our differences, but that we would begin to focus on the similarities, God, and that you would begin to use us for who you want us to be individually, but bring us collectively to bring glory and a reflection to your name that the world might see that you are the answer. We welcome you to the center of this nation, the center of this week. God, bring healing in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we're going to go into a new song that we haven't done yet. But I just sense in my spirit that there's some of us in this room that are walking through these waters of, of uneasiness and a storm that we don't know how to face. And let's just allow the grace of heaven to come in this place. Allow it to calm to redefine some things in our life, to move forward. So all across this room, can we worship together? i uh-huh. 
It sounds like grace to me political season, I think of the Good Samaritan. Now think of it this way though. Think of two people walking by a man who's been beaten and left in the ditch, but they're of the same political party. Neither of those two guys helped. But then someone who's in the other party stopped and showed mercy on him and helped. Now I'm so grateful for the opportunity to vote. I'm also incredibly grateful and thankful for the fact that our hope is not in the results. Let's pray. God, we love you. And we are praying right now for unity. We're praying for strength in us coming together. We're praying that the division is mended and that we come together as a people to serve you. God, we pray for those winning elections. We pray for those losing elections. And we pray for those that are celebrating or heartbroken because of the results. We're praying for you to come meet us where we're at and help draw us to be closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, um, let us be a little more like the Good Samaritan when it comes to the, this, this next little bit. Let's be a little more like the Good Samaritan and, and maybe be willing to reach out a hand or a hug if you're, into, if you're okay with that or maybe a text. But let's be willing to, to reach across what we now call the aisle and be supportive of people. Now thank you for your continued faithfulness and generosity here at Echo. Your willingness to trust God with your finances shows where your faith is. Now, if you said that prayer earlier in the message with Pastor Andy, we want to walk along with you. If you said that prayer for the first time, or maybe it's the first time in a long time, reach out to us and let us know so that you can we can take a next step with you and watch out for the bus. Thanks for being a part this week. We hope to see you soon. Be kind, stay safe, and have a great week. So beautifully, all I gotta stay is true to me. Say